Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate, where we lay bare the topical issues of the day. No holds barred. My advocacy this week has a ring of urgency. I'm saying it's time to raise the bar. In fact, it's now or never. Nafisa will be delivering a short and punchy advocacy on the rule of law, or at least the absence of it. Elsie is no first timer, although she's fresh to the show. She'll be schooling us on the fundamentals of the rape culture. Seydu is also drawing our attention to a timely need for a neglected practice. He says, purpose is preceded by reflection. Libras is not one to carry last. He speaks on the incredible matter of missing credentials among our leadership. He seems to be saying, the last shall be the first. Some might say we're out to crack open Pandora's box with our advocacies, and they just might have a point. We'll be getting straight to it after the break. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to our own dear Kene. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. How old are you now? I will tell you. Let's just... <laughs> Whereas the expression raising the bar normally speaks of elevating the standard, where mediocrity is the norm, it has to first speak of bringing things up to par. I'll be speaking about raising the bar, it's now or never. Often I ask, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Some might say, who cares? But actually, it can make all the difference. How often have you heard it said that unless Nigerians are treated with a certain roughness, you will not get compliance? We saw it in the matter of Wike's heavy-handedness in demolishing hotels and rounding up lockdown offenders. We see it in the culture of police brutality, of parents ruling their children, and in some cases, husbands, their wives. We see it in the culture of employers and employees. So I ask, is it that heavy handedness is needed to keep us in line because we're so unpolished and uncivilized? Or does it begin with the fact that we've been mistreated and abused over the years, resulting in our being a little rough around the edges and therefore seeming to need the heavy handed treatment? I heard that when a certain international supermarket chain expanded into Nigeria, they came with hopes of establishing a world standard service with an equally cushy employee package. However, they were swiftly acquainted with the fact that not only could they not treat Nigerian customers like their customers abroad, i.e. they couldn't leave toilet roll out unattended or it would be stolen. It had to be rationed. Furthermore, they couldn't pay their staff the same as their foreign counterparts or they would be spoiling them since Nigerian employees were used to much more rudimentary packages. I ask again, which came first, the uncouth Nigerian or the conditions that socialize them into this unrefined uncouthness? Now, taking things further, should we continue to dumb things down to the standard of the so-called average Nigerian, to what they're familiar with, or do we seek to raise the bar? Do we treat those we have the guardianship over with the standard that is accepted worldwide, that which is humane and right, or do we tailor it downwards to supposedly suit them and us? Because make no mistake, this lowering of the standard is as much due to convenience as it is self-serving. It will certainly cost us to raise the bar in a climate where mediocrity is the measure of what is acceptable, what is the norm. We'll be castigated, criticized, and even mocked by the very people we seek to give benefit to, but no matter. Those who transform cultures and nations must prepare to be pioneers, and in so doing, arm themselves to walk a lonely road, a very, very lonely road, but ultimately, rewarding road. It's through such sacrificial pioneers that new cultures and nations are reborn. 
Other than that, we may as well kiss our dreams of a new Nigeria goodbye. I say it's now or never. What do you say, guys? <laughs> Can I disagree with you completely? Okay. Completely. What, what do you know I'm saying? So let me be sure you're on my page. <laughs> you, 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 you just read your script and um, you asked me if I know what you're saying. Yeah, in case, I disagree in case you, with you. You didn't com grasp my point. Completely. Go ahead. Mm. First and foremost, you talked about um, the new supermarkets and uh, the fact that um, because Nigerians are used to a particular way, so you must treat Nigerians that way. Mm. That's not the no, issue. It's, an, a, it's a way of excusing it out. No, no you, you, you actually agree with me. Uh, I'm okay. actually using what that as a point say? that, yeah, say, no, anyway, go ahead. Say, go ahead. Yeah, I think he that's me. excusing away the point. Mm. And if we always say here that there are consequences for every action. Mm. But in a place where there are no consequences, because you talked about raising the bar, raising the bar, but mm. at the end of the day, there is no solution to raising the bar apart from areas where the bars are not raised. Okay. That's why I say I disagree with you. Mm. And, and so you need to provide solutions to raising the bar. Mm. When the new generation banks came, mm. they raised the bar. And when they raised the bar, you know, the old generation banks had no other options but to koto the new norm. In governance, when you raise the bar, when um, Fashola came, he raised the bar of governance. And that was what even better the APC you're seeing today. Everybody started asking for that thing that is happening in Lagos. We want to see it also in our state. Mm. When um, uh, Atairu Jega came, in INEC, he raised the bar to say, look, we need to sanitize this process. And until we sanitize this process, we can't have credible election. And he raised that bar, but unfortunately, the Supreme Court have dropped the bar again by jettisoning the technology that he introduced. The problem that we have here is the fact that we talk about all of the issues where you, the bar is not raised, but without providing a solution on how to raise the bar and the areas that we need okay. to raise the bar. Well, that is where I have a problem. LC, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to I it, hopefully. I you and I get what you're saying, but mm. for me, I think it has become a psychological issue. That's why I was addressing because it. Because we are at the point where mediocrity is celebrated. So you build a borehole and it's celebrated. You do this and it's celebrated. But at the end of the day, it is because the system has been left to decay to the point where it becomes a culture. So the point is, like he said, how do we move forward? What do we begin to do? And which is why I will always say that the NOA, that's the National Orientation Agency, has got a lot of work to do. I, I'm not, I can't sit here now to say they are doing the job they are supposed to do. They're not but doing they anything. need they're to engage the people. Um... And engaging them is not just about putting out content and pushing it out there. You have to break down this communication in a way that people understand the consequences of their action and how the fact that you use something or you drank a bottle of water and threw your bottle out of the window is a ripple effect to the flood that we are experiencing right now. So it has to be breaking down so much so that the layman understands the consequences of their own action. So yeah, I, 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 I really... Me, sorry, we need to call know. in the people on this. Yeah, I know where um, it's why waiting for them? I don't know if they are, if okay, they are, are you there. there. Why waiting for them? Let's to add to what you've just mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. The consequences. What's the consequence of drinking a bottle of water and flinging it on Todd Millan Bridge off uh, from your car? There are no consequences for such action. Mm -hmm. What's the consequences of the National Retention Agency not doing their job? There are no consequences. Mm. Um, so he said about this, it's a very lonely but ultimately rewarding road. I, th the thoughts that came into my mind is that when do we move from just one person, one individual pursuing change and making a dent to a group of people pursuing change? Now, sorry, the former speaker talked about um, Atahiru Jega and him bringing technology that made the process in INEC a lot much easier. And then the Supreme Court basically taking it down. So it seems like as if all the effort he has made so far was basically thrown into the dustbin. When do we go from just having one person to having a mass number of people? Because I think that's when challenging the status will be more effective. Okay, um, my own contribution would be that we've been, we've been doing catch up for a very long time, you know, trying to see if we'd um, adopt the, either the American system or the British system without realizing that we can actually crop a system that works for us, taking into consideration our diverse nature and all the cultural intrigences, you know. Um, I would say that we can borrow from what they have uh, implemented in Ghana, for instance, 
they have studied and realized that look, the own system of governance has to include the traditional institutions. You know, we really need to dig deep and find something that's peculiar to us as a people. As long as we continue to borrow, all these policies will continue running around in circles without achieving anything. We have culture that is different from theirs. We have our own ways of doing things. So we need to put all of this into consideration and devise a way, you know, to reach, agree as a people on how we're going to move our country forward. Can we quickly break the rule and yeah. okay, let's, let's hear from... Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, I mean, where I'm coming from very quickly, um, because I know we're out of time, was really to look at the psyche. But I, I now, listening to Nafisa, I realize, yes, even my own approach still has something, it's lacking. Mm -hmm. I was saying, look, each individual, wherever you are, don't make the excuse that, oh, Nigerians are not used to this, so I will lower the standard. A lot of times, when you're lowering the standards in terms of, let's say I owned a business, I decide to give my employees less because I say they're Nigerians. Meanwhile, you know what is accepted. Yeah. But you're serving yourself. So why don't you, wherever you have the rule or the governance, why don't you task yourself sacrificially to keep the standard up? No, don't but, keep but making the, excuses. What, what the, the problem said, She's saying that that then means only me fighting. It's also an inherent problem. Yeah. Because mm. if someone comes in and does the right thing, mm, and, and there's only one man. Only one man. Yeah. The, the possibility the, of that right why, thing, even, you know, it's... That's, it's, why it's, why it's, I said, yeah. that's why I'm saying that you know, there should be consequences for every action. Mm. And that's why when you have a government that refuses to build institution and you are telling me, let me go and do it, you know, you be the one that is doing it right. Mm. When every other person is doing it wrong, in a state it of is, lawlessness, it, mm. it is illegal to be done I get it, I get so, it. Don't forget so that it's, it's also those individuals that are in the government. So yes. if one person in the government cannot be the catalyst to create a change, so how do you expect the citizens to actually The truth the is I feel we have no choice. As much as I hear what you're saying, we have no choice. We still have to stand up for what is right. That's the way I see it. The fact that everybody else is I doing what is it. wrong, I have to still do what. Sorry, what were you saying? No, I said we have to stand up for what's right as a collective, not yeah. just one individual. But I'm saying even if the collective don't come together, I have no option. I have to do the right thing. That's really where I stand. Whether you do the right thing or Libras does, I have no option. I have to answer to my conscience as a human being. I have to do the right thing. Yes. Which is why I'm told that we're are, out of time. <laughs> which is why we are here doing the right thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> we're out of time on this segment. So much to say. One rule for the goose and another for the gander is certainly a recipe for discontentment. Interestingly, Nafisa is saying much more on this after the break. Over to you, Nafisa.